Hello everyone, welcome to August 1965. This is of course Playboy Review. Uh, it is Sunday the 18th of July and it's a really, really hot day today in the UK. So I'm taking some time out uh, from the garden to come in and just do this video uh, for a little breather. But I wanted to get into this uh, issue anyway, to be honest though, it's a, a nice uh, nice issue. It's got some very good interviews in it, um, some nice cartoons as well. We've got a nice front cover, um, sort of very vibrant, very summery. And we have uh, a nice playmate and we have a nice feature with Joe Collins, our playmate of the year as well. So I wanted to get straight into that. Uh, check the description uh, as you'll find a link to our Patreon in there. So if you wanted to donate any funds or if you want to join up to a new community on Patreon, which is a Playboy community um, where we'll be discussing the magazine. We'll be looking at um, the history of the magazine and people contrib can contribute there as well. And we'll have podcasts and live streams and eventually we'll start developing our own magazine as well along the lines and the ethos of the original Playboy. So let's just get straight into this, but check the description and uh, you'll find that in there. Let's have a quick look. So we've got MG here. Uh, and it says, please don't drink the suspension system. Uh, I assume that's because it's some kind of hydraulic possibly or something. Uh, I have no idea, but you'll know more if you're into cars. So we'll get through to his uh, press free swingers. Uh, he was meek, meek and mild. This advert's been running for a very long time if you're new to the magazine. You'll, of course, recognise Woody Allen here, who's got a nice feature in this month as well. Let's have a quick look. I like these Jose Cuervo tequila adverts. I always like the colouring on them. I like the artwork. Um, really nice style. Just something about it. Very atmospheric. I guess, you know, everyone has a different idea on art, but I really like the colouring on this one. Uh, Chesterfield people as well, Chesterfield King cigarettes. Um, so we're still seeing that promotion of cigarettes. Obviously, this kept going in Playboy for a very long time. I think well into the early 90s for cigarettes, possibly late 90s, um, until they were kind of withdrawn gradually. Beer on the rocks. Um, oh, no. I mean, you wouldn't put um, ice with beer. And it explains a little bit here about why you shouldn't. And we have uh, Mrs. Peter Sellers loves that man. That Man by Revlon. So Peter Sellers was uh, obviously a comedian and film writer, screenwriter, coming up around this time. Um, and there's an article in this magazine which features his first screenplay. Um, so we'll keep going. We've got obviously only six free capital records. All these promotions. What we've got here, this is Rose's Lime Juice, of course, for mixers and that kind of thing. Playboy After Hours. Uh, Dan River, and I guess this is uh, shirts. Um, yeah, I think this will be shirts. RCA Victor, we've got uh, The Beat of Belafonte, The Magic of Makiba, together on one great album. The Picardi Party is complete. So Picardi's been in a few times. The Playboy Hand Puppet, the Playboy Golden Pin, lots of licensing. Firestone are back again with another advert. Heineken, and we've got Sportsman here as well. Um, more, we've got uh, Gordon's Vodka, obviously most famously known for their gin. Levi's Stay Pressed, with Daycron. Uh, Sony Advert, Majestic Power of Sony Sound. Colt 45 Beer as well, and we've got Old Rarity uh, as well. What else have we got? Brute, the Playboy Forum. Uh, Dickle Tennessee, Sour mash whiskey. More pipe tobaccos as well. I guess pipe tobacco smoking is on its way out. I haven't seen a pipe smoker for such a long time, to be honest. I still see the occasional cigar smoker in some places. Um, and there's some places that offer good um, sort of cigars and good smoking rooms for cigars. But you very rarely see pipes about now. So here we have uh, obviously a Honda advert. I'll just get into this part first. So lots of people are liking the adverts for motorcycles. Um, so yeah, they're featuring quite heavily now. You've got Yamaha, Suzuki and Honda all in competition. I think they all feature in this magazine, certainly Honda and Suzuki. I can't remember if there's a Yamaha one or not, um, but lots of those adverts appearing. And we've got the Playboy interview of Robert Shelton, um, who was the Imperial Wizard with the Ku Klux Klan. Um, obviously around this time we have huge 
civil rights movements uh, springing up. We have uh, a pushback against racism, segregation, uh, and everything else um, that comes along with, um, you know, black people being um, sort of pushed to one side in society and not having the same uh, rules and the same laws and the same rights. So there's a huge movement around this time. So to feature someone like this in the magazine it's probably controversial and I guess it wouldn't happen today. There's very few publications who would take on something like this because they would be seen as either promoting or publicizing or giving airtime to people who perhaps shouldn't deserve it uh, or don't deserve it. Um, but obviously you've got to have a discussion with these people uh, in order to understand the mentality um, about them. It, it is something that I think it's beneficial to speak to people like this. Again, I'll probably end up putting this on Twitter and there may be people who will push back against it. But at the end of the day, we have to we have to talk to people and we have to understand where they're coming from um, because we can learn from it. We can understand why they're coming from that direction. Perhaps there's ways to convince them. Perhaps there's a way to um, just highlight their hypocrisy and that kind of thing. And there's a, a gentleman, I can't remember his name, an African-American gentleman. He's been on the Joe Rogan podcast and he actually met Ku Klux Klan members and he actually converted I think somewhere in the region of five or six uh, Ku Klux Klan members and he, he took their robes and they became friends he, just just by sitting down and talking to them so there is power in disc in talking about these things with people but um, in today's society it's much harder to do because of social media it's, it's such a touchy subject and you never know when you're going to get hounded which is a shame because these discussions are important so we've got confidence man this is spray deodorant tackle uh, we've got pipe tobacco here, half and half. Uh, what have we got here? These are Levi's, Levi's jeans. Kind of classic thing for the 60s, 70s, sort of Levi's. The most beautiful race in the world. Um, they say that every man has his price. And when the loot is large, even competition drivers can prove to be all too human. This is fiction by Paul Darcy Bowles. Um, we've got... Who have we got here? This is, uh, I'm just trying to look at the cartoon name. I can't quite read it from here, um, but a nice, nice cartoon, classic Playboy style. A Playboy pad, Manhattan Tower, a freelance photographer, uh, chooses an elegant contemporary apartment with, with all of Gotham at at his feet. So this is a little run around the apartment. They obviously got the views and um, the, the style of the apartment, the layout. Um, so all very kind of dark, sort of dark colours, dark woods, um, bold colours though that mix in with that, the blues and the reds. Um, certainly it's not a style we would probably look at today, you know, mixing these reds and blues with woods and mahoganies. It kind of doesn't match, I guess, aesthetically. But at the time, you know, the colours were becoming far more bold, obviously in the 60s. So I guess that's why that happened. I'd like to know more, more on what the influence was for the 60s fashion and the architecture and everything like that. I, I do need to read into that a little bit more. Uh, Melodramine, this is by Henry Cesar. Uh, he could have anything and everything. He could be anybody. He did and he was, even at the risk of death, invading the weird world of his hallucinations. So uh, quite a trippy piece of artwork here. Playmate of the year, we've got Joe Collins. Um, I agree, she's a very good playmate. Actually. She's a very, very nice looking, very all rounded kind of playmate in terms of looks. Quite neutral, I think. A lot of people uh, enjoy enjoyed her feature when she was playmate of the month. Uh, obviously, a very pink issue. I've got the pink panther theme tree running through my head as I look at this. Um, so we've got the nice pink sports car, pink drapes, and obviously we have everything themed uh, to be pink. So it's a nice, um, nice feature for this for this month. Uh, milestones of success, those critical decisions that determine the course and the progress of executive careers by J. Paul Getty. Uh, Bright with White, Robert Old Green. Nice little fashion shoot here. Barbara, and this is, uh, he would take her to lunch and then to dinner and the rest he felt sure would come later by Robert Ruark. Very dark art here as well. Uh, company colleague, and this is our um, playmate of the month, uh, Lanny uh, Balcom. Um, so she passed away around 1991, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, a, a nice uh, pictorial for the month. And you know, with Playboy, it was always having the playmate in her natural surroundings. And many of these playmates only did it once. You know, they they, they would come on uh, into the Playboy studios. They do their photo shoot. Sometimes they would do a little bit of promotional work with Playboy for a number of years. Some went on to bigger things, but many went back to just their normal jobs. And you went into kind of obscurity you didn't hear anymore but here's her centerfold for the month in uh 
its full uh, portrait. So you can see that again there. Just in case you've skipped through the magazine and got to this point, I'll just show you again, just in case. Uh, Playboy's party jokes. Uh, when there's smoke, there's ire. When there's ire, actually, sorry. An inflammatory excursion into the trials of tobacco fanciers beset by self-appointed weed killers. So obviously this gentleman here is having a, trying to spark up a nice... Uh, solitary cigarette and he's been hounded by all of these people and i guess it's a touching subject for many because we know the damages of tobacco um but we know that people still enjoy it and i think people now probably smoke perhaps for pleasure rather than for the addiction but it's very hard nicotine is very addictive but i think cigar smokers seem to have that down now i think a lot of them smoke on a sunday or they'll have it when they're going a long walk it'll be once every couple of weeks it's it's far more uh, in moderation than compared to cigarettes which i guess are filled with perhaps more uh, chemicals more additives which can cause uh further addiction and you know probably are worse for you in the long run but cigar smoking is still quite prominent now i think it's actually making a bit of a resurgence from what i'm seeing it seems to be a bit of a, a luxury that's coming back which is in a way good to see it's good to see it's personal responsibility at the end of the day uh, for people to choose what they want to do so golf in here as well uh, again, Wilson. And as I say, you're seeing many pursuits coming through to Playboy now, which Hugh Hefner kind of said he wouldn't have in the magazine at the start. If you remember, it wasn't about all the outdoors and about sports. It was all about being in your apartment with your music and the ladies and your books and your literature and all that kind of thing. And it's gradually moved away from that because of the money that's coming in from the sponsors and because the fact that people like being outdoors and they like sports. It's not something that you're going to be able to contain your magazine to. So what's new to Pussycat? And this is based on a film by uh, Woody Allen called What's New uh, Pussycat? So this is a, a behind the scenes. This is, I believe, his first screenplay that he wrote. Um, so this is a nice little pictorial here. You'll see Woody Allen in many photos, different situations as well. So nice set of photos. Playboy does tend to get these behind the scenes um this access at this around this time. Uh, it just shows you kind of the power that it has. It can get into many different features. It's it's obviously huge now playboy at this point well known all over the world um so it's nice to see friendship this is ken w purdy in the darkness the shapes seemed familiar so he acted with alacrity i'm not sure what that means alacrity i'd have to check that uh this is leroy nyman again and I, I do like his artwork it's very um it's simple but very effective uh, the, the way he paints it really does set a kind of scene particularly with boats and ships and waves um it gets that kind of effect really well like the spray and the the colors and the, the brightness and everything like that that you get from the sun on the ocean it's done very well alberto vargas here we have another ribald classic the history of sex in cinema arthur knight and hollis alper so again more uh breakdowns of various films various scenes um it's nice it's nice to see i've tried to watch a few of these vintage films they're very hard to find online but there are a couple around um obviously compared to today's standards they're not obviously not an entertaining watch but nevertheless it's still good to watch them to see what they are all about this is shelf silverstein uh, on fire island uh, what else do we have she's got everything and this is Desinex really works most often recommended and prescribed by doctors for athlete's foot. So I think that's the first medical um, advert that we've seen. Something for health. We haven't seen many. I think we may possibly some vitamins and some tablets for like um, boosting like caffeine, that kind of thing, keeping you awake. We've seen a few of those. But something like that, a prescribed medication we haven't really seen in Playboy before. Another cartoon here, which again would probably be quite controversial today, uh, obviously with this kind of African uh, explorer, uh, and then obviously he's got like a new partner with her, I think those neck bars they wear to stretch their necks. Yamaha as well, again, oh there is a Yamaha, I said I wasn't sure if there was a Honda, Yamaha and Suzuki, but there is for this month, I'm sure there's another one later on for the Suzuki. Datsun, we've got Inverhouse, imported rare scotch or more letters it's worth pausing the video to look at some of these letters if you haven't before certainly um have a quick read through them and we've got carol shelby of course who was the uh, ferrari's formidable foe and if you remember he was the uh gentleman who built or designed and built 
the engine, I think, for the GT40, which won Le Mans, uh, which had a number of years in a row against Ferrari. It's based, obviously, you may have seen the film, which came out recently with Matt Damon uh, and Christian Bale. Very good film. Uh, certainly worth a watch. We've got Edward uh, Brooke here as well. And we have uh, Thomas Shippers, who is a composer. Some more cartoons and some continuation of some of the articles. Nothing too new in these last few pages. Cactus Casuals, I think that's a new one. And here's Suzuki as well with a farmer on his buffalo farm. And we have more cartoons here, mannequins. Mannequins Inc. And how did you get started in this business, Miss Andrews? And protest against the rising tide of conformity. And of course you have this uh, row of people who are all the same, which we again generally see today. Just masses of people all thinking the same things, afraid to speak out on things that they find important um, because they have to stick with the crowd, which is a shame. We need to start returning back to times when we question everything that will help us. San Francisco and Boston debut soon. And that's um, if you head over to the Patreon um, for patreon.com forward slash 109. There's a Playboy community there that you can sign up to. And we're going to be building something that returns to the original ethos of Playboy of this era and slightly beyond and slightly prior as well. You know, something very simple, uh, something for men. Um, uh, that, that's the aim. There's not much available today. There is something missing from the market in terms of magazines um so that's us done for this month and as i was saying i think we're missing magazines of this type in this era i think we're missing uh that ethos that playboy had of uh unashamed sort of uh unashamedly promoting things like sex um and having honest things like tobaccos i know that the laws in europe kind of um stop you advertising certain certain products now but there's no reason you can't do tie-ins with videos and that kind of thing to review certain things but um anyway head over to patreon.com forward slash 10 9 i'll be back um most likely a couple of days with the next issue which will be september 1965 uh and i'll speak to you all soon enjoy your weekend wherever you are and we've got our freedom day in the uk tomorrow which is the 19th of july when everything kind of goes back to normal and we'll see how long that lasts but anyway enjoy your weekend i'll speak to you soon